Although we have made incredible progress, there is a little bit more work to do because we still need to deal with this handle edit. And this is going to be a little bit longer, meaning it's going to be longer definitely than the clear list. And our basic setup is going to be very, very similar with handle delete, where I would like to filter it the list because my idea is going to be very simple. So let's say we're going to have the to do list and I'm going to be adding some kind of item. What I would like to do right now is the moment I'm going to click on it. Notice it will going to be removed from the list. However, we will going to add the value here in the input box. And then the moment we're going to click on it, then the new value, the edited value is going to be added again. And since we already know how we can delete the item, since we use the filtering, we just need to understand that it's going to have the same logic where first we're going to filter the list. So I would like to display the list that is not having the item. That's going to be number one. And then I also would like to get the selected item. So instead of just filtering the list and then it's saying, okay, so now all the items that don't have the ID are going to be displayed. I also would like to get that specific item that would be selected with our edit method. So for this, we're going to say const selected item. And in this case, we're not going to use filter or map. We're going to use find, which is very, very similar to the filter. And the difference with find method is that unlike filter, where we're returning the array, we are just going to return the item that we're looking for. So if we're going to be looking for this dots that items, and then we're going to be looking for that specific item, we can say in this case, if the item does match the parameter of ID, and we're going to write it like item ID does match the ID. Again, this is kind of a very important where for filtering, we were returning the array with the items that don't have the same ID that we're passing down. Since selected item, we would want to place it back here in our input box. We do need to match this ID. So that would be the difference as well as I don't want to get the array back. We could technically use the filter method. But what is really nifty about the find method is the fact that we're just going to be getting a single item. Don't believe me. As always, let me back up my words and I'm going to say selected item. And let's save it and let's see how this is going to work. And in this case, why don't we do the, I don't know, make breakfast again, breakfast, add the item. And now the moment we're going to click on edit, then if I'm going to head over back to a console log, I should be having in a console, the object. And what do you think this is going to be the object? Well, there's going to be an object surprise, surprise with make breakfast. That would be my title. And then obviously I'm going to be having this. UUID that we set up all the way in the beginning. Okay, so I have the list without the item and I have the specific item. What would I like to do right now? Well, since I know that in a state, what is the control in the input? Where are we having the input? And I think the input is equal to this item property because in the beginning, this is obviously empty. And then as we're typing, we are adding the values here. So why don't we do like this? Why don't we the, do the following method? We have this dots at state, then we pass the object again. Now I'm going to set my items again to the filter items. Like I said, very, very similar to what we already did. Actually, not just similar. It's exactly what we did with deletion, but we're going to add more items here. And here I'm going to say item. And first of all, the selected item. But in this case, I'm not looking just for the whole thing for the whole item i'm just using the title since the title is the one that i'm trying to pass here in the actual input as well as this is going to be the case where i'm going to set okay so id is going to be equal to the id that i'm passing down because understand this when i'm trying to edit the item i want to steal that item to give the same ID that we pass down as a parameter. So that's the reason why I'm going to say that in a state, this also going to be the ID, because what we're going to do eventually 
is just running the submit again, just because we were going to click on edit and we're going to add this item right here within the input doesn't mean that we're not going to run the submit. Eventually, as we edit the item, we're still going to click on handle submit because we're going to be submitting the form. So we will going to rerun all this. And as we are rerunning the handle submit, we will going to grab the value from the state. Only in this case, the value is not going to be from UUID. It's going to be the value that we already passed it down ourselves. Okay. And the last one is going to be edit item. And this is, like I said before, where we would set it to true. That would be the reason. And you'll see in a second why we're doing that. And that's going to have to do with this button because we're just going to do a little bit of styling. But now let me save it and let's see how everything is going to work out. Now, first of all, let me close this up. And I can see that to do list is going to be item defined, but never used. And you know what? I do want to fix that because it does annoy me. So let's see. We have the item and the item is going to be from the to do item. Hmm. OK, so I did basically two imports. So that was really smart from my part. Let me save it. Now this is going to be better. Uh, I have to do input JS edited item. OK. Edited item, we haven't still covered it, and we will in a second. But why don't we just test this out? And you know what? I think it's going to be better if we do have our React tools. So I'm going to say React. And now let's add the item. Let's first of all make sure to refresh that everything is going to be fresh over there. And we're going to have some kind of item. I don't know. Uh, make, make bed. Let's say that's going to be my item. Obviously, this is going to be in my array. And now notice something interesting. What's going to happen within our state? The moment we're going to click on the ID. Well, first of all, I'm going to have right now the edited item is going to be the true. Then make bed is going to be the item value. And then I will have also the ID that was initially there. And you know what? Probably I didn't cover that enough. So let's see. So we have the ID with 3781D. Let's just remember these first, I don't know, what is it? Five values. And then let's add the same one. Let's say again, make bed. Make bed. Now let's add the item. Here I'm having right now a different ID. Since again, we run our UUID. But if I'm looking within my items, I can clearly see that I have this 3718D. And the moment again, we're going to click on editing, I'm going to be getting back my value. So like I said, even though initially we had the UUID, now we set in the state these following values. So what I can say is make bed and make breakfast. As you can see, I'm adding the values right now. Breakfast. And I can do again, add the item. And now in this case, again, there's going to be new UUID. Edit item is going to be again false. The ID is going to be new ID, item is going to be empty, and so on and so forth. So hopefully you understood the gist where we did all these setups just because we had some initial values to begin with there. Okay, so we have to-do list. We can get rid of to-do list. Then to-do item, we're also not going to cover. However, there's few things that I would like to show you what's happening in the application of what I would like to fix. Well, first one. As I click on it, I would want this edit item to turn green, meaning this is going to signal to me, okay, I'm not just adding the item. I'm actually editing the item. And how we can do that? Well, we already have this prop, the edited item prop. And the way we're going to do our whole setup is going to be very simple. Where is the button? We know that we can use the conditional rendering. And for the conditional rendering for the button, I'm just going to say that if the edit item is true, if I'm editing, then there's just going to be a different layout. Now, first one probably is going to be the easiest one where I can just show you how we can work with text. So let's say I'm going to say I'm going to be looking for this edit item. And let me cover this one more time where originally this is false. So we said this item false. Then normally when we just do the submission, we resubmit it as a false. And then only if we're editing, we set it to true. So for that split moment where we have the edit, then we're going to have edit item true. But then the moment we're going to submit it again, it's going to go back to the false. 
And I'm gonna be testing the value, and I'm gonna be using the ternary operator, and I'm gonna say, okay, if the edit item is true, then have the value in a text of edit item, and then if this is gonna be false, then just write add item. That's gonna be my two text options, not just add item, because we're not gonna be adding all the add time and the item. We're also gonna be editing. And again, let's write uh item number one add item then when we're going to click on the actual edit item icon then we're having the edit item in our button and what i would also like to do is work with these classes and this is going to be very very similar where we're just going to select all the classes that we have for now we will delete it or you know what we're going to cut it out we're not going to delete it and then there's going to be curly braces and again, we're going to be looking for edit item value. And in this case, I'm going to say if this is true, then I would want to have some kind of style. So let's say BTN, BTN block, BTN success. So what I'm saying, there's going to be a green button and margin top is going to be three. If the value is going to be false, which is going to be the default value, then I'm going to have these classes instead. And once we save it again, Let's add the item. Let's say something like this again, some gibberish. Then once we click on it, notice now I'm editing the item and I can actually uh, uh, delete it. Say item number, I don't know, five or four. And now I successfully edited the item instead. And now again, the button turns blue. And the last thing that I would like to do with this project is I don't want the user to add any items without typing anything because at the moment we're not checking whether there is some kind of input actually. So I can just add, keep on adding items that are going to be empty. And what would be the fix for that? We have the attribute of disabled and say disabled. And here we have a few options, by the way, by default right away is going to be set to true. So we're going to see here add item or we can control it. We can say disabled and we have false. So now in this case, even though we have the disabled attribute, if we set is equal to the false, then the button is going to be clickable. So we can still click the button. However, if we're going to have true, that is going to mean that the button is going to be disabled. So we're not going to be able to click it and we can click it all day long. And that would be obviously the same thing as we just have the disabled. Okay. Why don't we do the conditional rendering here as well? Only in this case, we're going to be looking for the item that is in a state. We have the item, which in the beginning just has the empty value. So there's nothing in there. And what we can do is we can set up the ternary operator since we're passing the item down anyway, because we need it for our value or the value attribute. And we're also running right away the handle change on the on change event. And the way this is going to work, I'm going to say, okay, if the item is what well at the moment i'm looking whether this is going to be true and if the item is true meaning if it has any kind of value in it if it's not just an empty string i can say that disabled is going to be equal to the false and i know this might be a little bit misleading where on the first one which for the item is true then we're setting this to false but we need to understand that for the disabled we want the false one because that's when we were going to be adding the values. And in fact, if the disabled is going to be true, then the button is going to be disabled. And just to show you how this is going to work. So let's say in the beginning, the item is what? Empty string. What is the value for empty string? Truthy or falsy. And empty string is going to be falsy. So that is going to true to false. That's the reason why disabled is going to be true. However, the moment we're going to start typing, then what's going to happen? Well, first of all, let me save it. Then as I start typing, now the value from the item is in fact going to be true. And that is going to set the value for disabled or false. Again, a little bit tricky since we are looking for the true value for the item and then setting this up with false. But again, the reason why I showed you that for disabled we would want the false one. That way, the button is going to be clickable.
And yeah, that's gonna be our application. Hopefully everything worked out for you guys. And I'll see you on the next project.